What's up everyone, welcome back to the last part of my three-part series on planning for star, Milky Way, and night sky photography. In today's session, I'm going to show you how to use the free computer program Stellarium. I use Stellarium to plan for all my shoots that really have to have a detailed view of where the Milky Way will rise, set, or be located in the sky. In the first example, I'm going to show you how to plan for the shot you see on your screen. This was taken at Ruby Beach in the Olympic Peninsula in Washington State. I wanted the Milky Way to be shown rising over the Pacific Ocean with a nice contrasted tree line on the left hand side of the photo. I used Stellarium to plan for this shoot and we're going to dive right in and I'll show you how. So the first thing I always do when using Stellarium is to open up Google Maps. Why do I open up Google Maps? Well, the key to using Stellarium is to pre-visualize the actual scene you want to shoot and where you want the Milky Way or another celestial body such as the moon, stars, or another constellation to be in the sky. So for this example, we're going to go to Olympic National Park's Ruby Beach. And I'm just going to go in here right to where I know Ruby Beach is on the screen, and it's right here. So that example photo that I showed you before is actually taken at Ruby Beach. This is also one of the locations we'll visit in my six day, five night, night skies of the Pacific Northwest workshop and tour. And I'll leave you a link for that below if you want to attend. So I'm just going to drop my little marker right here on Ruby Beach. I'll right click on the screen and click what's here. When I click what's here, you'll see these little buttons pop up. And you can just click over here on the left hand side. And that'll give you your exact location. So what I want to get out of this location are these longitude and latitudes. So now that I have my longitude and latitudes, I can come down here to the bottom of my screen and open Stellarium. If you don't have Stellarium, it's a free program and you can download it by using the link below this video. Now that I've opened Stellarium, the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to set your Stellarium up. The first thing I always do is go to my location window and we're just going to work our way down through these settings. So I'm going to click the location window and you can see my longitude, latitude, and altitude. Now, the easiest way to do this is jump back and forth between Google Maps and your Stellarium window. So I'm going to go ahead and jump over to Google Maps and I'm going to copy this first number right here. Just the numbers, you don't need to copy the direction. And I'm going to hit Command C and I'm going to copy that. Now I can jump back over to Stellarium and come in here to my north latitude, hit Command V and it's just going to copy that in for me. I need to put spaces in here because for some reason Stellarium doesn't do that for me. So now that's correctly formatted. Now I can jump back over to Google Maps and I'll go the west direction and I'll hit command C and I'll copy that one. Now I can jump back into Stellarium and copy this over to the longitude. Now for some reason Stellarium doesn't provide a big pop-up map to do this. I'm not sure why but this is the workaround so you can easily get the correct location you want to shoot it for. Now my altitude is at sea level so it's zero meters. I'm just going to type in new location here and it's going to be Ruby Beach Washington. And I'll just click add to list. Now that's added to my list so I can use that whenever I like. And you can actually come down here and you'd see that it was added to your list. So you could just search Ruby Beach and it's right there in your list. So now I can go to that anytime I like. So now that I'm done setting my location I'll just pop out of the location area. And the next thing I'll do is come over here to my scroll bar and select date and time. So we're going to do the exact date and time that we'll be shooting at this location on my night skies of the Pacific Northwest workshop and tour. So I have a June tour this year, so it'd be 6, and I think we're going to be at Ruby Beach on the 12th or 13th. So we'll just put it somewhere in here. And then you have the time to set as well. So you can just set your time for whatever you like. I'm just going to set it at around 9 or 10 p.m. for this time of year. So now you have your date and time set, you can go ahead and click the X out, and you can come down here and pause your time. The next thing I want to do is set up all the sky viewing options window. So first off we're going to look at stars. The absolute scale is the actual size of the stars in the sky. So if I make this bigger and smaller, you'll see that the stars out here actually get bigger and smaller. I like to keep mine a little bit over one. Now the relative scale shows you the size of stars compared to one another. So the stars that are closer to you, or the planets that are closer to you, will look bigger, as the stars that are farther away will look smaller. So if you made this relative scale really big, the stars that are close to you will start to look huge, and the ones that are far away from you won't look so big anymore. So this is good for making star maps or learning your basic constellations and stuff like that. So I like to keep mine in a maybe 1.5 area, so it can see the really big stars in the sky. You can turn your twinkle on. I'm going to keep mine at 1. I like to turn the atmosphere off. You can set up your show planets, show planet markers. I don't show the orbits or the light speed. You could if you wanted to. I don't personally do that. Uh, and then you want to turn your star labels on and your planet labels on. I put my hourly zenith rate at 80. Next thing I want to do is set up your markings. I just set up cardinal points on my markings. That's the north, south, east, and west. 
and I'm going to do constellation, show lines, show labels, and you can turn that on and off as you like. Then I'll do my projection. I'm just going to do a perspective projection. You can change these to whatever you like as you get better at using Solaria. Next we're going to jump into landscape. You can change all these different landscapes and it'll just show different landscapes that have been uploaded. I like to use ocean just because it's a flat landscape and it's easy to see, so I always use that one. Then I'm going to go to show ground. I don't want to do show fog. That just shows the atmosphere on the ground. You could do that if you like, but I don't really like to do it. And I'm going to use this landscape as default, so it'll always open up to this landscape. Then you can set your Star Lord to whatever you like, depending on what you want to see within Stellarium. I just have mine set to Western. Next thing we're going to do is go down here to configuration window. And this is super easy. Just go to navigation, enable keyboard navigation, enable at mouse navigation. Then you go to system time and date. So that'll just pull the time and date from your computer. Next I'm going to go to plugins and go to compass marks and I'm going to go ahead and do load compass marks at startup and I'll show you why I do that in a second. So let's jump back to this shot for a second. I'm now standing on the beach at Ruby Beach. This is the South Pacific Coast right here, so the coastline and the trees. This is the Pacific Ocean, and here's the Milky Way rising in the south. Now I had pre-visualized this shot, knowing that I wanted this nice coastline to be shown on the left and the Milky Way to counterbalance it on the right-hand side of the photo. So in order to plan for this shot, I'll show you exactly what I did. So I've jumped back into Google Maps at the same location we were before at Ruby Beach. In this step of the tutorial, what I need to do is determine what time the Milky Way will rise at that location and when I should be there to capture it. So to do so, first off I'm just going to copy and paste this right here, these numbers, and that's going to give me my longitude and latitude. Once I copy and paste those, I'm going to jump into Google Earth. Now within Google Earth, I'm just going to go ahead and paste those coordinates right into my Google Earth search bar, and you'll see them pop up right there. And then I can just click enter, and that'll take me to that exact same location in Google Earth. My goal in Google Earth is to get the actual heading from my location on the beach to where the Milky Way will rise or where I have pre-visualized it to rise in the sky. So to do so, I'm just going to zoom out and I'm going to grab this little bar right here and this is the ruler. Now with my ruler I can measure map length, ground length, and heading. And the only thing I care about here is the heading. So if I wanted to take a photo and have the Milky Way be seen over the Pacific Ocean with the same coastline right here on the left hand side of my photo as you had seen before in that example, I'm just going to put my little ruler right here where I'm standing and then I'm going to drag it and you can see that yellow line. Now this yellow line will be the direct line of sight from where you're standing to where the Milky Way will be seen in the sky. So wherever you want the Milky Way to be in your photo, just drag that little yellow line to it and that's the direction or line of sight as I stated before. So if I want the Milky Way to be seen right here in my photo, I'll just drag the line right there and click it. And that's giving me a heading of 201 degrees. So now that I have that heading of 201 degrees, I can pop back over to Solarium and plug it in. So now we're back at Stellarium. We're still on June 14th and it's about 8 p.m. at night. The first thing I want to do is come down here. I want you to turn your constellation lines on. I think it's really cool to learn those and after a while using Stellarium you'll start to pick them up. Next thing I want to do is turn on constellation labels. I don't actually turn on constellation art because I think it really impedes me actually planning for my shoots. I don't turn on the equatorial or azimuth grids either. I think it's kind of confusing having those unless I really need them. I'm going to turn my ground on. And sometimes I'll turn the ground off, but most often I'll just keep it on. Cardinal points, you always want those on. That's your north, south, east, and west. Atmosphere, off. We turned that off before, but there's just the quick access to it if you ever want to turn it on and off. And then we also have stuff like planet labels, which I like to keep on. And the rest of this stuff you don't really learn about. You can play with it later if you'd like to, but I'm not going to teach you in this tutorial because it's not really necessary for the tutorial. The thing you do want to turn on is this compass marks, and we had enabled that plugin earlier. So if you don't have compass marks on your screen for some reason or another, you can just go back up here to this label, go to configuration window, plugins, and compass marks, and that's where you turn it on, load at startup, and you want that to load. Now if you'll remember a few minutes ago, we found the compass heading of 200 degrees while in Google Earth. So by having the Milky Way fall at 200 degrees in the night sky, it'll set up for that shot that we had planned for earlier. So I'm just going to go over here to time, and on the night of the 14th, I'm just going to scroll through the time. It's 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. 12 o'clock, so it's now the 15th because it went past midnight. And you can see the Milky Way is here in the sky. It's at 180 degrees, which is south. So if we keep going, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, around 2 o'clock it's about 200 degrees. So that means it'd be sitting right out in the Pacific Ocean, as you saw in that shot before, and as we just determined with our heading setting in Google Earth. So anytime around 2.40, and you can go to about 2, 3 o'clock, and it'd probably be about perfect, right about 200 degrees. 
anytime from two to three o'clock, it'd be sitting at that exact location in the sky and you could shoot it. So using those simple tips and tricks, you should be able to easily plan for your next Milky Way shoot. You can apply those same tricks if you wanna shoot something like Saturn or the moon or something else in the night sky. You can see Saturn right here on my screen. So if you click that, you can figure out when that would rise or set or be seen at a certain location within the sky. All the skill sets that I've taught you in these last three tutorials are just things that I figure out on my own from practicing and experimenting. So the best way to really learn this stuff is to use these key concepts that I've taught you, but most of all experiment on your own and figure out what works best for you. There's obviously a million different ways to do this well and to do it efficiently. These are just the ways that I've found to work well for me, so I use them in my own workflow. So hopefully you've enjoyed these past tutorials. If you want to pick up my free star photography ebook, I've left you a link below the video tutorial where you can pick it up. Thanks for tuning in and I hope you enjoy the tutorials. Have a good one.